I started very small. Most people are not aware, but what became Alder Consulting today started with less than one cent. Wow. And I remember all I had on me was 17 naira 50 copper. And I went to a bookshop and I bought cardboards and I did some cartoons. I sold that night, made 168 naira, took my tithe out of it, plowed back the money. But before the end of that year, people were ordering artworks from me for about 40,000 naira. 40,000 naira was the cost of a Mercedes. I'm talking 1980s. Wow. Okay? Um, and my first major break was consulting for a, multi, a, a cellular phone company that has zero sales. And um, I produced a three-page document for them. And they went from zero to 100 million naira within six months. And then um, they offered me one million naira retainership. Again, remember, a Mercedes then was about 40,000 naira. Wow. And so here was a very young man who was wearing jeans and just had a laptop and would go to a corporation and just daze people, you know, and, you know, get results, <laughs> you know. Um, now, how did I get to that is the question, and that is a challenge that parents have. Now, when I was a young boy, I used to do a lot of cartooning. I used to do a lot of drawing. Now, if you sat down at that with me at that point in time, you would say this boy is going to end up an artist. And that's the mistake we make. We make a mechanical progression of the giftings of God instead of a conceptual progression of the giftings of God. What is a conceptual progression? What was being displayed at that point in time was creativity. The application was drawing. So I call design furniture, I call cartoon, I call, and so what I do now is that companies come to us and we conceptualize ideas for them, create products for them, show them how to increase their market share. It's still creativity. So parents, if you see your child drawing, that is not where he is going. That is the application in which he could handle at that point in time. Allow him to be. That guy is the same thing Joseph had. He could create nations. He could conceptualize economies. Creativity knows no bounds. And the first introduction of the creative genius in the Bible, Jesus, is creativity. In the beginning, God created. So never, ever deny your children creativity. Allow them to think. Allow them to read. You know, I said something. I said, you have to be the total man. You have to be the renaissance man. The problem with Christians, and it's a shame, is the fact that they limit themselves to what they read. You are supposed to understand philosophy. You are supposed to understand economics. You are supposed to understand the humanities. All those things. When I was in university, I read law. Um, all those gifts. I was cartooning in school. I was doing art exams. But I remember any time exams were approaching, I got bored easily, so I would go to the library and start studying biology and start studying science. You have to be like that. <laughs> it's because you don't believe enough in yourself. Yes, 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 yes. To understand Genesis chapter 1 for the, in the last five years, I've studied cosmology, I studied quantum physics for two years, just trying to understand Genesis chapter 1. You have to be like that. You have to pass that on to your children to love knowledge for the sake of knowledge, to love the logos for the sake of the logos. One more point. When I was in university, I became a Christian, and I was quite disappointed at the standards of branding standards of Christians on campus concerning Jesus Christ. So I would take my money over the vacation, do beautiful banners for Jesus that look like the standard of Coca-Cola, put them all over the campus. Little did I ever know that when I was branding Jesus, I would become a brand consultant. I'm not saying it is a causative factor, but there's some associative factor with that. In other words, what you do, what you are going to become, you're already doing. It's just that you don't know how to configure it.